Hello guys, uh, today I'm going to show you how to make multiple door access system using microcontrollers, uh, using one single microcontroller and as many RFID antennas as you'd like. So uh, to set up this project I'm going to be using uh, a single microcontroller. Uh, for this case I'm using a CH the 32V307 development board some antennas, RFID antennas. Uh, for this project, you can use as many as you'd like, because that's the whole idea of the project, uh, to have multiple antennas being controlled by one microcontroller. A couple of breadboards, because we're going to be connecting so many antennas together. Uh, a file, uh, any USB flash drive to act as a database and storage system, and as many antennas as possible as many antennas as possible to see how you can handle multiple scenarios or oh, and uh because of the nature of the connections you're going to need lots and lots of cable so these are all the basic tools that you would need uh, a microcontroller as many antennas as possible some breadboard to help with configuration and multiple antennas and a USB storage medium where we will store all the antenna events and sort of it will be like our database. Okay, so let's begin. So we're going to start with our two antennas. Uh, these are Arduino RC522 antennas and usually you connect one at a time but through SPI they share a couple of pins and uh, that's when our breadboard come into case. In this case uh, I'm using one breadboard which I have soldered at the back to connect all of them in a parallel. So these pins they're going to share from the six pins in this, from the eight pins from this board, they're going to share six pins in common. And one pin will be used to select which antenna will be active at which time. Okay, so in order to begin this tutorial, uh, the first thing is we have our board and uh, we're going to start by connecting the six shared pins. So that will be your MISO, MOSI, system clock, ground, reset, and uh, VCC or 5 volts or 3.3 volts. Okay, so I'll be using uh, this breadboard here, as you can see. So these six pins, they are all interconnected. And uh, I'll take these six pins and then I'll connect the ends of these pins to the motherboard, to the development board and then from here onwards you can add as many antennas as you would like and you just need to make sure that you dedicate only one pin per antenna that would be used as our slave select Okay, so now that all the pins, okay, so now that all the pins are connected, uh, so the first layer of pins go to the microcontroller and it will power each successive layer of pins. So we can now connect uh, our two antennas for each pin and at the end of the day, uh, we will simply reserve one pin per antenna. 
the last pin, the leftmost pin, the slave select pin. That will be the only unique pin per antenna. So the reason why this works is that the slave select pin is only needs to be driven high or low for the antenna to activate. So any GPIO pin can work. Just make sure to configure it in push-pull mode. Okay, so this is the first basic setup. Um, so what I've done is I've connected all three of the pins behind at the back, so they're all connected. So uh, both uh, both two antennas should be on at the same time. So the next thing we're going to do is, yo. Yeah. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take two. Uh, we're going to take two separate. Rope. So this will be antenna 1 and this will be antenna 2. So how this works is that they work opposite to one another. So when antenna 1 is on, antenna 2 is off. That way they can still communicate via the same SPI. Okay, so this is the final configuration. So this is the standard SPI. So this is the standard SPI connection, but uh, each antenna has a unique slave select uh, or a slave selector that's unique to it. So uh, they are going to work inverse of each other. So when uh, so per clock cycle, when antenna one is high, antenna two is off. So only antenna one gets red, and when antenna two is on, antenna one is off. So to test this, uh, we're going to be using multiple RFID tags. And uh, some of them we're going to put them into our database via antenna one. And then those ones that are not in the database, if they scan, if they are scanned by antenna two, then we can trigger many events. So if it's like a shopping mall, if you, your antenna is not removed from the database by, by antenna one, then if any other antenna picks it up, that should sound off the alarm. So to store all the antennas being read, uh, we're going to use a simple USB drive, and I'm going to be storing and I'm going to be storing all the antennas that are going to be read. Uh, if you look at the back of your development board, there are two USB Type C connections. One is high speed, the other one is full speed. So we are going to connect to any of those sockets. Uh, we're going to connect, I used high speed, but you can use whichever one you prefer. Okay, so all the antennas that tag one reads are going to be stored and indexed in our file storage. And whenever antenna 2 uh, reads a tag, it's going to first index all the tags that are existing in the database on our storage drive and if it doesn't find any particular match then it means that that tag has never been read so it might not grant access to the door or it can sound off an alarm so the situation i'm going to try and simulate is a shopping mall where if something has not been bought via the first antenna then the second antenna should drive the alarm Okay, so now uh, we're going to connect this. So for now, we're going to connect this setup and we're going to see how it performs in, uh, in real life. And I'm going to show you how exactly the code is implemented and all the necessary schematics when you're implementing these things.